Um, the, the quickest way to uh, find out if it's a stack of 20 before I cut it down is to feel it. To feel a stack means to grab the stack of chips and by holding it in your hand be able to feel whether it's a short or long stack or if it's a stack of 20. The next thing, once I'm feeling the stack and I know it's 20, I want to hold it properly, which I will try to, to show you here. Notice how the uh, pinky and the index finger are on a line that goes across the center of the, of the chips. And those two fingers ideally together or at the most mildly apart, those two fingers are across from the thumb. So we actually have a cross that goes through the center of the chips if we are holding the stack of chips properly. This is the best way that I would like to learn to hold the stack. So from looking at a stack and then grabbing it, I want to hold it this way. The next thing to, to go about would be to use the tip of the index finger to roll a certain amount of chips out at the bottom of the stack. So let's take a look maybe this way. Here I am holding the stack and I will roll. Rolling meaning I will roll with the thumb. I will rotate or roll those chips forward slightly. So the tip of the index finger gives me the cut and the thumb gives me the roll. At the same time, I am still hoping to preserve the structure of being across. More about this later. But notice that as I am cutting, as I am cutting the chips with my index finger, I am not letting my index finger hook. Hook cut is often the most common mistake. Oh, this is, a, this is wrong. You see how this finger goes here instead of, instead of here? I want my index finger to look like this as I'm roll cutting and not look like this here as I am roll cutting. So the way to roll would be to always slowly check that I'm able to roll the 20. So let's come back to holding the stack and then roll and cut. And now I'm dropping the rest of the chips, not heavily as I'm doing now, but lightly. So I thumb roll from a cut that's not a hook cut. And then I drop the chips and cut into it here. as I'm slightly rolling with my thumb forward. So notice again, let's go slow. Hold, roll, cut, drop, cut, 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 and the hand's empty. All the chips are here. In Europe, usually these chips need to be proven, or at least used to be when I worked at the uh, tables. I'm guessing that it still is the same. This is also the way that needs to be the chips need to be spread uh, this way uh, for the surveillance to be able to see that there are five. The chips need to be cut down and proven, rolled up, and then stacked up into the stack again. Let's go from the beginning. So I hold the stack. Without hook cutting, I roll the chips out, place them, and then cut into them three more times and spread the chips out and that's how to cut the stack down. To stack it up again, I will pull these up allowing for a short tiny pause there and also not obstructing that view because you see this is now to show that this stack is evenly cut as opposed to, as opposed to something like this. This is now four and here cutting in it's, you see it's one short, this is 19. Or if I have 21, this is extra, 5. Here, you see, nothing, nothing good. So then we stack it up. Okay, but I am making it may perhaps a little bit too complicated. Let's come back to the 20 and cut it down, prove it, stack it up. Now, when I'm stacking them up, I will have the fingernail of the index finger on top of those chips, more or less. So even though when I cut the stick, uh, roll, roll cut, I don't want to, I don't want to hook cut. Now I will have the 
finger this way. So as I'm stacking it up, I can pick up a stack to hand it over once it's been cut with my nail on top of that. After the, the stack of chips has been cut down to prove that it's 20 and stacked up again, I will not grab the stack again overhand, uh, of course, in order to not um, be able to palm chips from the top of the stack once it's been proven. Oftentimes, the, the stack needs to be cut with one hand and proven, stacked, stacked up with the same hand, and some casinos need to, some casinos would probably insist on passing it out with another hand, then I cut it down. So here's the, the way to cut the stack by roll cutting. And the little bit, little bit different way, and that's a slightly more advanced, is uh, to drop. So I'm no longer cutting, but uh, drop cutting as it's called, meaning I'm able to um, a little more experienced way is I'm able to feel how many chips uh, without needing to roll them out to verify through the thumb. So, so the way to drop cut uh, enables you to cut the stack this way or to cut from the stack to drop cut. Yes, any amount of chips. Oh, that worked. Five, four, three, two, one. Uh, that is relatively um, more complicated to do. But that will be maybe another way to further practice the cutting. For now, learn to um, learn to hold the stack and feel it. Drop cut, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, roll cut into it, prove it. Stack it up and learn to pass the stack. Eventually, let me adjust a little bit here. Eventually, perhaps you will be going rather soon to, to being able to cut relatively quickly and properly as well as correcting yourself if you get to four or six to correct yourself real quick about that of course sometimes as you will see the chips are not always cut by five but 25s for example or are are cut by four so you might wanna you might wanna start to learn to cut the chips down by five and get proficient with that, and only from that proceed to cutting down chips in fours, uh, which I didn't, which I did now. Um, on the other hand, uh, especially especially if you're learning um, to cut the chips down as a gambler, you probably only want wanna learn to, to cut the stack by five at first. If you are learning to be a roulette dealer, blackjack dealer, craps dealer, you probably need to learn to cut by four and by five at will at the same time before you hit the live games. I was thinking it would be a good idea also to take a look at common mistakes. You remember when earlier I was talking about a long stack and being able to feel, feel the stack of chips and make sure that it's not long or it's not short, uh, not short before you cut it to avoid the... Uh, four so that's 19 to avoid embarrassment right we actually learned that by uh, chipping up well at least in europe that's i guess how we do it in chipping up in in america is called mucking up so by beginning to learn to pick chips up and then stacking them up together one learns to feel the stack this is, by the way, not a bad thing to practice when you approach a pile of chips. So the, the way to do it is to scatter um, a whole bunch of checks or chips. And before you mark them up, as a beginner especially, you would like to flatten them more or less out. Meaning that there are not many, not many chips overlapping one another, which would make your beginning learning uh, harder. So once I have my chips flat, I will be picking them up into the palm of my hand starting slowly so the way I do it take a look at one chip at a time is I will just go this way from this side it's really hard to do it slowly I guess but slowly is the way is the way you begin maybe this deserves a separate video but given that I can pick chips up and stack them together in my hands, then put them on the table. That's when you learn to feel the stack. 
So going back to the beginning, you learn to feel the long stack and get rid of the excess chips before you cut it. As well as you learn to feel a short stack and make it up to be full before you cut it. So that feeling or lack of the ability to feel would be the first common mistake. You probably also remember when I spoke about avoiding, let's go to this side, avoiding the hook cut. Actually, I saw some videos on YouTube already here that a moment ago, and uh, um, American dealers, especially in the US and Canada, are often uh, hooking, hooking and hook cutting. I can't really do it for, <laughs> very well, very poorly, but they get the uh, habit of hook, uh, hook cutting. That's where American dealers often will struggle coming to craps tables, because in order to be able to learn to drop cut, Hook cut is the first um, thing to, that needs to be unlearned, but I will also save that for another time. So remember to check yourself that you are cutting, roll cutting like this, and you are not roll cutting like this, the difference being the tip of the index finger. Watch again correctly, and watch again incorrectly. So that's the one. I should mention that thumb cutting so meaning, now I am now dropping the chips and cutting them with my thumb is, uh, or used to be when I worked in the casinos, not allowed in Europe. Uh, however, it, it does seem to happen all the time at poker games uh, in America. So, so uh, you would have to check for yourself, you know, depending where you work or where you play, um, which casinos, what the rules are. But uh, thumb cutting in Europe is considered bad uh, or, or even forbidden. So that's um, another thing. And finally, the last one for today, I should mention that uh, before I pick up a stack of chips in order to cut it, I want to make sure that the stack is not dirty. This is a dirty stack. See, there's another chip there that doesn't belong here. So that would be a good thing to make sure is not the case before the stack of chips is cut down. I want to make sure it's a clean stack. I hope you like this video. Thanks very much for watching and until the next time.